For all of its recent failings and shortcomings, Square Enix has been successful in one area of game making in most of their titles, the music. Fans of the company and their franchises will cite and discuss the greatness of the music from the Final Fantasy franchise. Kingdom Hearts came along in the early 2000s with more songs that were incredibly iconic and memorable. There are those who would argue that the company and their franchises have lost their touch, but that's a topic for another day. What I want to discuss is the production value of the music. In other words, how well the music is made and whether or not it sounds as good as it could. When the first Final Fantasy games were released in the late 80s, they were limited by the technology of their time, and music was not above these limitations. The creation of music was reduced to only three notes being able to be played at one time. However, as time went on, these limitations were lifted one by one. With the release of each new console, music increased in its proficiency and sound quality. Fast forward to the year 2000, and the world saw the release of the PlayStation 2. We had finally reached the era in which music limitation had all but been erased. The sky was truly the limit. Music technology at the time was beginning to allow for more realistic representations of real instruments than ever before, and the home consoles were capable of supporting full-quality audio files. But something interesting happened. In 2001, Square Enix, at the time known as Squaresoft, released Final Fantasy X. It was the first game that supported full voice acting, amazing graphics, and full 3D areas. The music could have been absolutely legendary from a production standpoint, but it wasn't. With a few small exceptions, the music from the game largely sounded more like the games from the past generation. This was an opportunity largely missed. But perhaps it was just a time of trying to figure out the system and its capabilities. About a year later, Square Enix released what is now one of its most popular franchises, Kingdom Hearts. A game that combined Final Fantasy characters with the Disney characters that we had grown up with. A truly fantastic game, but once again, the music quality fell flat. The songs were memorable, no doubt, but the production was incredibly subpar in consideration to what the console was capable of. Unfortunately, the same approach to the music quality was seen in both Final Fantasy XI and Kingdom Hearts II. Incredibly memorable music, but low quality sound. The first sign of the company trying to match the quality of other similar titles came with Final Fantasy X II. Interestingly though, the soundtrack for the game has been one of the most polarizing of all. Personally, it still remains one of my favorites. Since then, the franchises have seen an increase in the production value of the music. Unfortunately, it has also seen a decrease in the memorability and charm from the original games. While I don't believe that the two are mutually exclusive, I still wonder why we saw such a disparity in the quality from that period of time. Square Enix was not, and is not, a small company. Back in the day, they had more than enough capital to create these mind-blowing games, yet the music didn't receive the same amount of attention. I can't imagine that the company was lacking the funds necessary to fully orchestrate or even partially orchestrate the soundtracks. The lack of polish in this area created a disconnect in the experience and the gameplay. It was difficult for me to feel fully immersed in these gorgeous areas and landscapes with music that sounded like it belonged on the original PlayStation. Some were so jarring that it was uncomfortable for me to get through. For those who may not believe me, take a listen to the Pirates of the Caribbean level music in Kingdom Hearts 2 and compare it to the original. In my mind, the approach to the music in this time period seems somewhat lazy and half-hearted. The lackluster sound kept these technological marvels from reaching their full potential when other games at the same time were reaching so much further. If you haven't already, be sure to listen to the soundtrack for Advent Rising for an example of what I'm referring to. But perhaps I've missed something. Maybe there's a cultural identity to that style of music that is lost on me. It's conceivable that the style of music was an intentional choice due to the desires of the Asian market. However, given the current trend of the music in their most recent titles, I'm not sure that's truly the case. Looking back, it's unfortunate how the music was handled in that time, but it's refreshing to see movements like Video Games Live and Distant Worlds bringing these fantastic pieces of work to the life they should have originally had. This darker time in their music history is unfortunate, but perhaps it was the learning curve they needed to find the path to true musical greatness. Only time will tell.